Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be trying a full face of new makeup. I have some such exciting products to try with you guys today. I've got the brand new primer from Tom Ford that I am super excited for. I've got one of the new bronzers from Yves Saint Laurent. I have the Natasha Denona Hyper Natural Face Palette. I have a new special edition Clay de Peau Highlighter. I have the new concealer from Galon. We're going to be giving the Lisa Eldridge mascara a new go. One of the new lipsticks from Tom Ford and the new eyebrow pencil from Benefit. And I'm also going to be showing you the Traditions eye brush set from Sonia G in action. And I also have hot off the press some brand new brushes from Refa that are their first ever synthetic hair makeup brushes. So I'm going to be trying all of this out today and sharing my initial thoughts with you guys. So without further ado, let's get started. Always got to have my Hogwarts mug full of coffee when I'm filming a long video. I suggest you do the same. Okay, so the first new product that I'm going to share with you today is this new Precisely My Brow Detailer from Benefit. I have the shade five, which I think is the deepest shade and is my only issue with this is I feel like we probably need darker shades because I like a sort of dark brown, but I feel like there should be like a black, you know? You see how minuscule it is, it's tiny. I have gone in with the Rare Beauty Brow Gel already. My brows are still, they do have some lamination still, so I can get a nice laminated brow at the moment because I have some help from that remaining lamination. But this pencil, I just find it so quick and easy to get hair strokes because it's so fine. But not only is it fine, so you can do the finest ever hair strokes, it's also very highly pigmented, like you can barely touch your skin and get a hair stroke. So I feel like that for me is where I started preferring this to my previous Holy Grail, the Huda brow pencil, is the fact that this requires a lighter touch to lay the product down, to get the product on your skin. It requires a much lighter hand. The Huda Beauty kind of need a little bit more pressure on the pencil to get it to deposit color. And that just allows you to make a much finer stroke. You don't get smudging, you don't get a thicker hair stroke that you would wish because you're barely having to touch the skin. And that is amazing. So this is my new, like, holy grail eye pencil. And that Huda Beauty has been like my holy grail for a long time. I've probably gone through like 10 or more of those pencils. And yeah, so this one has like beaten it out for sure. I like them both. They're both very, very fine, very, very precise. This one just wins because it is so much easier to use because of that ability to use a much lighter pressure. You can be a lot lighter handed and get a lot more realistic, very, very fine hair strokes. So I think this pencil is my second new Holy Grail of 2024 so far. The first was the Givenchy Loose Powder for setting my under eye concealer. Now we've had two already. This is gonna be a good year, I know it. Just going to use my go-to NARS Pot Concealer to prep my eyes for shadow. I'm going on one of my solo cinema trips today. I've been like loving it since my husband bought me my Limitless membership for the year for my birthday, which is, if you don't know, in the UK here, the main cinema chain is Odeon and Limitless is a free pass to go as much as you want, basically, to the cinema whenever you like. It's free, go as many times as you like, see whatever you like, and it's always free. It's like a, a membership, basically. So I have been going at least once a week and I'm just absolutely loving it now. It's just, it makes me so happy. I said to my husband, as soon as I sort of sit down in my chair, I've got my snacks, I've got my drink, I'm sitting in my seat. I like to cozy up underneath my coat like a blanket. I'm such a weirdo. As soon as I'm there, I literally, it makes me feel lighter. And I think it's just 
the action of doing something for myself. And it's not a wild craze, I'm not having a whole spa day. It's literally just sitting in my own company and doing something for a couple of hours solely for myself. It's honestly the best thing I've ever done for like my mental health and just my well-being, but just my happiness as well. It just makes me feel lighter every time I come out and I just feel like lighter, you know? So we have this little face and eye palette from Natasha Denona to use. I'm excited about this. I was one of the only people to be excited for this palette, but I've been seeing really positive reviews and a lot of people who were pleasantly surprised who maybe didn't expect to like it as much as I expect to like it, really enjoying it. So I'm excited. I'm gonna start off with this T6 brush. So this brush set, six brushes from Sony G, including the one in my hand, is the Kiaki Kakish is the Tradition Series Kiyaki Kakashi, Kiyaki Kakashibu. I definitely haven't pronounced that with any justification, but that's what I've got. This is my favorite set of eye brushes ever in the history of the universe. Since I received them so generously from Sonia and Beautylish, I have not used anything else. I'm gonna use like, I think like basically the middle with a little bit of, the lighter of these sculpting shades and this big fluffy brush. This is probably my favorite brush of the set if you want to pick up just one because I think they are available as singles, these brushes. If you want to pick up just one, go for this one. It's just delightful. Literally any one and done day, any quick blending in the crease that you want to do, this is just perfect because it's huge and fluffy. So it gives you a great diffused job in very quick time, but it also is quite narrow. So you can really get into the crease as well. So I really feel like this is a versatile brush and one that I don't have anything like in my collection. And I just love it and it's so soft as well. But this whole set is just, I've barely used anything else for my eyeshadow since this arrived into my life. So I'm just, just gonna do this. I think the great thing about this palette is it's designed to kind of do everything you want in one. If you are a real minimalist with your makeup, you could literally use this for any occasion, any style of makeup. You know, you could just do bronzer in the crease like I've done today and go. You could do a full on glam look with some of these. You could do something softer and prettier, something smoky. Do you see what I'm saying? All shimmer, all mattes, all of the options are in there to do kind of a lot. You could also obviously use the blushes on your eyes. So yeah, I think this is, if you really want to cut down on how much you're buying or you just want a really small collection or you're trying to be very minimalist with your collection, this is going to give you a lot in one place. So I love that. I like that brands are doing that thinking of, you know, the fact that not everybody wants entire rooms full of makeup. I know most of us do, but some people don't apparently. So I'm going to go into this shade with the T5. You just have everything you need in this little brush set as well. Six eye brushes and you would never need to buy another, quite frankly. You would be set for life if you take care of them. I feel like whenever I'm filming a get ready with me, even though I'm not in a rush, I've got loads of time, I feel like I am. Immediately I turn the camera on and <laughs> I feel panicked. I don't know why, what's wrong with me? Also, every time I turn my camera on to do a get ready with me, I end up doing way more of an intense makeup look than I planned for that day, given that I'm literally going to the cinema school run and then we've got swimming lessons later, but I just think at this point, I just do not care what anyone thinks of my makeup. I quite often will rock up to the school run with two completely different eyeshadow looks and no one even notices or cares anymore. They're just like, oh, there she is again, batty lady, rocking up with one green eye and one orange eye again. I think really this has been a lesson for us all that no one cares about what we're doing as much as we think. This everyday shade is screaming my name and this is the T2, probably my second favorite out of this little set, although I'm a big fan actually of the larger pencil brush. 
it's just the exact right shape and size for the lower lash line exact right density picks up the perfect amount of product for that location and dispenses it blends it like a dream i feel like my eyeshadow has improved so much since i discovered sony g brushes because they're just so clever and they do so much of the work for you okay and then of course ended if you thought i was not going to use this shade come on same brush by the way and I'm just going to pat that and in the corner I was waiting for the sparkle to come raining down on my cheeks because it's such a sparkly shade that it like looks like one of those where you you're going to go blind applying it because so much grit is going to get in your eye but I'm not feeling but I'm not feeling any glitter falling I'm just using a finger to add some intensity. I've kind of got a little bit more on board of using a finger with shadows lately, have you noticed? I've been really trying my best. I, I don't love it. I don't love touching makeup. I don't love not using brushes, but it undoubtedly makes a difference when it comes to getting a shimmer shadow to really pop. So I try to force myself wherever possible. Sometimes just quicker, you know? Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I think I thought this was going to be a bit more intense of a look, but I'm not mad about it. It's it's just a really nice kind of everyday look for what I like. Very easy going. Shadows all worked really nicely together. I like to have the option of the bronzers there as well. Adds a little extra dimension. So we're quickly going to detour before we go in with mascara to primer and we're gonna have a little face off today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my soft matte primer on one side of my face, my usual typical primer on this side. And we're going to use the new primer on the other side to see, I just wanna see the difference in the glow. And I want to see the difference once I've added foundation to how the foundation looks, if it adds, much luminosity or not. Sorry, but this bottle is stunning. Absolutely glorious. I'm obsessed with the bottle. I have not tried this at all yet. Some of these products today I have tried a few times. This is brand new, hot off the press. I literally was waiting for the post lady to come to use this today. It's got a bit of a pinky tone to it. Interesting. I say it's interesting because it's definitely not as like glowy as I thought it would be. So this is the Shade Illuminate Soft Radiance Primer and the clue is obviously in the name, it's Soft Radiance. So actually, I think I initially was like, oh, am I a bit disappointed? Was I expecting like the Dior, the new glow, is it the glow veil? That's really super glowy. But the benefit that I'm noticing already, it's obviously glowier than the matte. The matte side is definitely a bit more matte. This side has definitely got a bit of luminosity to it. But what I'm noticing is it's really giving me a very smooth canvas for my foundation. I feel like glowy super glowy hollywood flawless filter the new dior glow veil you're sacrificing this sort of smooth skin prep that you get from a more smoothing primer for the luminosity and the glow this looks like a little bit of luminosity it feels a bit more like i've just applied skincare but it's not highlighty at all and my skin is looking like very smooth i can already tell foundation i just know foundation is going to go on top of that flawlessly but i'm definitely not going to get the glow that i was expecting and this does have spf in it as well spf 25 there is a fragrance it's a noticeable but not intense sort of fresh skincare type fragrance i feel like this side is cancelling out my redness better than the matte side as well and this side just looks a bit like it has a bit more life to it 
interesting. Right, so I'm just gonna give that a moment and I'm gonna go in with a coat of this luscious new mascara from Lisa Eldridge. I have already reviewed this. You guys know I absolutely love it. And I have really been putting this to the test over the last few days. I have been out in rainy conditions. I went on a school run the other day where I have like, I get such dry eyes in winter and then in summer, hay fever. So my eyes are just always like streaming. Well, I say that only on the school run. I swear the, my children's school is like the epicenter of pollen. The second I enter that place, that playground, to pick up my children, my eyes are just like screaming. It's just the only place it happens. I don't know what it is. Something in that field is not for me. So my eyes were like pouring on this school run and then I also met a friend for a coffee the other day and cried because we were just having an emotional chat and I am a crier, okay? And again, not a single smudge, not a single drop, not a single run at all from this mascara. I love it. I feel like you get all of the benefits from, that you would get from a waterproof mascara as far as it's staying on and not running or, you know, holding up if there's any water about your face without the like harshness on your lashes and the removal process of a waterproof mascara. So I'm all in. So I'm gonna use my Hourglass foundation because it's a nice like matte foundation and therefore perfect to see how this primer looks underneath. Are we gonna see more radiance on this side than the matte side? I'm intrigued. I'm gonna use the B02 brush from Refa. This is the new foundation brush, the new synthetic foundation brush. It feels so soft. By the time this video goes up, these will be available online. but they will be, I think, in the concept store, so they are gonna be a really good deal. I think they're like half price, this little set. A lot more affordable than the natural hair brushes. Synthetic brushes are typically a lot more affordable, but this brush is really applying very quickly, evenly. No brush strokes being left. It's getting the job done in super timing. It's nice and sort of getting a nice crisp outline around my brows. And it's big enough that we're able to get, you know, a layer done nice and quickly. You know, messing around. We don't have time for messing around over here. But it's small enough that you can get, you know, around your nose, top lip, etc. you know? Really, really nice. Nice, firm buffing brush. This would also be perfect for cream bronzer or contour because it's just a really nice shape and size to hug the cheeks. I had planned to mix in some of my lighter shade today, but because I left my palette over there, I've just gone with my kind of in-between shade, which is fine, a little bit deeper than me right now, but once we've done concealer, it will be fine. I'm impressed with that brush. That has applied flawlessly in like a double time or half the time. That doesn't make sense, does it? So an annoying little problem that we have here or that I have here is that the light on this side is glowier on my skin. <laughs> really annoying and I'm so sorry about it and we are, or I am, no one's helping me. I am working on a better solution but for now, just bear with me. I'll let you know what's really happening here. But this side with the illuminating primer on looks flipping flawless, so smooth. I really appreciate that. I don't think it's really adding like glow to the skin. There just wasn't that much glow to begin with, but it's feeling like this side feels more hydrated than the soft matte side and it looks equally as flawless. That's what I love about the soft matte primer is it just gives me such a smoothing effect, such a smooth application. Everything goes on top of it always stunningly, but it's the smoothening that I love it for. And this new radiance primer is giving me the same level of smoothing as this side. I'm not getting any glow now the foundation has go, gone on top, no extra glow. But this side feels a little lighter, more hydrated because it is, you know, 
a more glowy primer than this side. So I'm excited about that. That could be a new favorite as well. Another coat of mascara. You didn't think I was only gonna do one, did you? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Okay, so let's have a go with this new concealer from Galon. This was the one that I said to you guys I was most excited about out of all of those new concealers that arrived for some reason the same day, about 58 of them. This does have quite a noticeable fragrance. That's the first thing I noticed. It's Parma Violets, that's the exact fragrance of this concealer and I love a Parma Violet, so that's not really, that's neither here nor there to me, but if you're not a fragrance fan, whew, this is, it's up there. And I'm going to use Rafa's new synthetic concealer brush. This is the B01. And this looks so great for concealer. A really nice, precise little bufferoo brush. Proper little workhorse, nice and dense, but tiny, get right up in there. Love that, and it's done that really nice and quickly. Definitely could use this for like a liquid highlighter as well, cream eyeshadow. That is the third brush that I haven't used today because I don't have any cream eyeshadow is the B03, which is especially designed for like cream and liquid eyeshadows. And you can get that little set of three for a really good price at the moment in the concept store. If you have been after some really good synthetic brushes at a pinch it's a great deal so i have had this concealer for a few days this is not my first rodeo not my first time using it and i really like the doe foot it's quite a firm one but it's not uncomfortable to use and it's really nice and precise and easy to place the product picks up a nice amount of product i have a nice shade for me it's 2n this packaging feels lovely as well very weighty you get a really nice amount of product in there i think it is 11 mils 11 and a half mils i'm so sorry i missed out half of a mil i love that little detail on the lid beautiful packaging it feels very silky is the word I'm drawn to when you are applying it. it. Really has a very nice, silky is the best word I can think of to describe it, feeling to it as you're applying. I'm just using my Givenchy powder on my Beauty Fix sponge. By the way, this is my favorite sponge ever. It's just so squidgy. I just love to squidge it. I would love to bite it as well, but I'm trying not to. I just really love to bite things. But it's literally like a giant squishy marshmallow and I'm loving it. But I wore this concealer for the first time a couple of days ago and actually filmed a little check-in. And this was literally, I mean, at least, I can't remember how, what time this was, about six o'clock. So it's, it's at least eight hours of wear in this little video and it still looked flawless, so smooth really really flattering on my under eye area and i was super impressed i thought it was really really nice really wore incredibly well it claims to have like 24 hour wear and be like waterproof bulletproof but i didn't wear it for 24 hours but i did wear it for like a solid nine and i was like looking in the mirror no creasing throughout the day, no creasing by the end of the day, no fading, it wore incredibly well. And I really, really liked it. I don't think it is going to challenge my house labs for top spot. Solely because it doesn't quite have the same amount of coverage. I've got a little bit of darkness still showing through where my house labs is like, there is no darkness. There never has been, how dare you suggest it? So I do think house labs is going to like hold true in first place, but I think this could be like second. I don't like to make such rash decisions 
after like the first few uses. So I will keep you posted. I'm working on my concealer rankings video at the moment. I just did my foundation rankings. The next one I'm working on is my concealer and I'm just kind of figuring out exactly the order of everything before we go live with it. But I feel like this is every every chance of being second because it's so nice. It has great coverage. It wears so nicely. It's very, very flattering. I like how it feels under my eyes. I don't mind getting wafts of Parma Violet as I'm getting ready. It's got a lot going for it. What also has a lot going for it and is a hot contender for another new Holy Grail in 2024 is this bronzer from YSL. The packaging is insane. It's very weighty, solid, luxurious. It's, oh my God, this like leather feel front with the gold logo. I wish this was black. I just, I'm not a big fan of this color of brown. If I had a choice, which I don't, I would make it black, but they went with brown and it's fine. You know, that's your prerogative when it's your brand and not mine. This is shade two and I chose this shade because it looked from the swatches like it was going to be the most neutral out of like the first three shades. I think shade one was gonna just be too light for me. Shade three I could have gone with, but it looked warmer than this one. This one looked a little bit more neutral, which you guys know I prefer. Then when I swatched it, I was like, hmm, because the swatches looked def like just a classic, not, you know, too orange, but it did just look like a pretty average warm bronzer. But when I apply this on the skin, it definitely is a little more neutral leaning on me than the majority of bronzers on the market. You know, so many of them are just very, very warm. And of course, bronzers are supposed to be warm, that's their job. They're supposed to warm up the skin. But lots of us just prefer something not so warm. This applies so silkily, really, really smooth. And it's one that, you know, you press your brush. This is the Nishi Pro from Sony G and you press this as a, you know, a hefty workhorse, dense brush. And there's really no like kick up barely at all. I can build this all day, very, very buildable formula, but it still does not look powdery. It still looks like seamless on the skin and the color is just so flattering. I was a little disappointed. The one thing that I was disappointed about was that I don't see any lum luminosity. So on the website, it's described as being a soft matte with a luminous sheen. I don't know where that second part went. But on me, I would just say I see a soft natural finish, soft matte natural finish. It's not, I don't see any luminosity. I don't see any glow. I just see like a natural soft matte finish. But the shade is absolutely perfect. The formula is gorgeous. It goes on, you know, over the top of foundation beautifully very, very softly. It blends like a dream. It builds like a dream. It's very, very natural. And I love the color of it. I also, I can't smell anything. Mm, can I? Maybe a, a hint, maybe a very subtle hint of fragrance, but I really, I was getting my nose right up in there and there was not much at all. So good news for the fragrance haters. There may be a little, but there's not a lot. Next, let's have a go with this highlighter from Clé de Peau. This is from their Luminizing Love collection. And <laughs> is that not the most beautiful compact you have ever seen in all your days? There she is. I mean, stunning. Absolutely glorious. You know, Mother's Day is right around the corner. This would make a stunning Mother's Day gift. Very light. So I'm going to go oh, with a little bit of caution. I think I can blend this out from here. Yes, we can. Definitely a little light for me, but we're going to go with it. Very, very icy on my skin tone. It's definitely going to leave a bit of a cast. 
So I think this is going to be, this specific shade is Celestial Sparks. This is gonna be better off with a fairer skin tone. Because it has that sort of lilac-y shade, which on my skin tone is going to read a little gray just because it's a little light for me. But I'm gonna try and blend that. And once I've added blush, that's gonna really help blend that into my skin tone. Okay, so going back into this face palette from Natasha Denona, I'm gonna use the T3, which is the pencil brush I was talking about earlier. I just love this so much. I'm just gonna use a bit of the middle shade of the contour. Oh, I should really use the contour as actual contour, shouldn't I? <laughs> oh, what are we doing? Come on, get with the program. Okay, so I'm gonna use my Sonogy Fan M and I think for me, I'm gonna, and then, you, you know? I think the deeper contour is gonna be too deep for me, but then the middle one looks a little warm. So I'm just gonna, Okay, perfect. So that is a really nice lighter amount of pigment, so it's much easier to control. You see the difference? That snatched me, didn't it? So I'm just doing one boop in the deeper shade and then two boops in the medium and we're going carefully and lightly right where that natural shadow hits and blending it gently up into the bronzer. That's really nice natural contour, exactly what I like because I'm afraid of any other kind. And that has given me a nice little sculpted cheek there. I like it. We know that Natasha can do a really nice contour because I used her contour single powder for a long time. So we know she can do that. I wish she would release more like cheek products in just single form, you know, blushes, highlights, bronzers in singles, please. That's, we'd like that. We like palettes too, but singles as well. Also, everyone has been saying, I wish these blushes were different colours, and I agree. I feel like Natasha goes always for the pinks with her blushes, and some of us love peaches, corals, you know? This is quite pink. I'll say that. Similar to the contour, I'm gonna boop, and then boop in there as well. And we'll try that. We'll see what the beeping gets us. Okay, fine, great. I was a little scared. I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. Seems like the safety first approach worked. What I think a lot of people would like to do is just use the lighter pink. By the way, this is my classic cheek from Sony G. I think if you have a fairer skin tone, you might just like the lighter pink on its own, but don't be afraid of the deeper one. It's not as frightening as it looks. So I'm gonna do that all over the cheek and then I'm gonna add a little of the deeper one to build that up. I think the deeper is a little, is a little bit corally maybe. That's definitely the way it's pulling on me anyway. So yeah, you can mix these, you can add a little of one. Again, I kind of wish these were a bit more of a glowy formula. I feel like we typically get a lot of matte blushes as well from Natasha in these palettes. Is that just me? It's a little bit of a buff, everything together. That's really pretty. It definitely ticks the box that she was going for, that, you know, we've got a really nice, easy going, every day, everything that you need in one place. I think she's achieved that quite nicely. 
And finally, we get to these new Slim Lip Color Shine lipsticks from Tom Ford. I picked up one shade because I just didn't really know what to expect and the swatches online were throwing me off a little, but I got the shade Open Back and it is so beautiful. I was so happy with it. Very, very skinny. As you can see, teensy, very skinny. Let's compare it to the Lisa Aldridge mascara for size purposes. Very, very skinny, very easy to get a precise lip. And this color is just like the perfect caramelly nude. It's a really nice light thin feel on the lips, these lipsticks. What was sli slightly disappointing for me is I was expecting them to be shinier. I don't know if that's just me, you know, like the YSL candy glazes that are like so super glossy. I was kind of hoping this was gonna be glossier, but to be fair to it, it is a lipstick and not a gloss and it does have a nice amount of shine. I do find it flattering on lip lines and texture as well. It doesn't wear especially long, but it also isn't gone from my lips, you know, in 10 minutes time. But here we have the finish makeup look today. I definitely feel that this side with this new Tom Ford primer is looking a little more flawless. What do we think? Okay, so a bit of a rundown on my thoughts on all of the products I tried today. First up, this primer. The packaging is really doing it for me. I'm never disappointed with Tom Ford packaging and this is no different. It's stunning, certainly the most beautiful primer bottle I've ever seen. It definitely surprised me because I thought this was going to be much more along the lines of the Dior primer, something or like the Chanel complexion enhancers. I expected way more luminosity than it actually gives, which is not really a bad thing because as I applied it, I really noticed how smooth and evening it was on my complexion. So I'd actually happily sacrifice a bit of that luminosity that I was expecting for that extra refining quality because most primers aren't gonna add much glow to your foundation by the time the foundation's gone on, you're gonna lose all of that glow. So I would rather have the smoothing like I get from the soft matte primer and a bit more of a lighter hydrated feel on the skin, which is exactly what I feel this gives me. And it also means that I can use this underneath really glowy luminous foundations that I usually favor without it becoming too much and everything just being too much glow and too much shine. I will keep playing with this under different foundations and let you know all of my thoughts with a bit more use in my February roundup. This palette from Natasha Denona, I definitely want to use this a few more times. I think it's very, very clever. I feel like it's for people who want something just easy to use every day without having to do a lot of thought. Again, Natasha's gone with the names that tell you what the shadow is kind of intended for. So we've got everyday, we've got dreamy, statement, soft and casual so it's kind of telling you the shadows to use depending on the mood or the look that you're going for i like that we've got these to use as well as shadows in the crease it just helps you not have to reach something else because there isn't really transitional mattes in here so i really really like that I, I do like the blush even though i'm not really a pink blush kind of girl typically i think it looks pretty and it's an easygoing blush I don't think you necessarily have to run out and grab it and it's going to knock your socks off. I think if you have a lot of makeup, you maybe won't be particularly wowed. I think it's not necessarily a wow factor product. I think it's more of a, like a staple. So it's gonna be up to you as to whether you feel like it's a staple that is gonna to add to your collection or not. It will be excellent for travel, I'll say that, because you've just got everything that you need in one travel-friendly place. The Galon Terracotta Concealer, I'm loving it. I'm gonna keep using it. It feels so comfortable under my eyes. I think it does a great job. No creasing, very flattering, very smooth. Really nice natural finish, and it wears very, very well. I wish it had a hair more coverage for me personally, but an excellent concealer. I think it will be great for more mature skin. And again, we'll keep using this and 
give you any further thoughts in my roundup but I'm also going to be I am working like I said on a concealer ranking video that is going to be right near the top unless something crazy happens this bronzer from Yves Saint Laurent ooh, one of my favorite products that I've tried so far this year I just think it's so natural and beautiful I just love the color of it I find it very very flattering I love the formula the packaging is unmatched really really love it these are permanent bronzers so you don't need to go broke for it you don't need to run out and buy three shades they are permanent don't panic by them is what i'm saying but i think you will not be disappointed if you are interested in these i certainly was not i think it's a gorgeous component that i love using because it's just so luxurious and that helps me like feel good about the amount of money i spent on it you know it's hard to find bronzers that aren't extremely warm if that's just not your preference. So that is a good one. Already know how I feel about the Lisa Eldridge mascara. I really, really enjoy it. If I'm wanting something that still gives me enough impact, but is a more natural lash than like I typically lean towards a huge big fat lash, very, very dramatic. It You can get drama out of it, don't get me wrong, but it is, there's something more natural and fluffy about the texture of the lash that it gives you, which I really love. This brush set, I've told you guys before, it's my favorite eye brush set. If you wanted to buy one eye brush set and never need another eye brush again, this is now my favorite ever that I would recommend. Love that Ruffa have come out with synthetic brushes and I know there's going to be lots more to follow. This is such a great start and the foundation and concealer brush that I used today really did a great job. These are a much more affordable price point if you're looking for more affordable brushes or you prefer synthetic brushes. This is a great little set. Everything you need for all of your liquids and creams, quite versatile brushes can do several jobs each you've got you know your primer skincare foundation you could use this for concealer easily cream contour or bronzer cream blush even and then the concealer brush again concealer of course liquid or cream highlight and blush you could use this for cream shadow absolutely and then the eyeshadow brush which i didn't get to use today again this is going to be easy to use with this shape perfect for lid packing you'll be able to blend with this as well and it's even sort of narrow enough that you'd be able to use it under your lower lash line so i feel like this is a great start at a great price and i know that we'll be seeing more synthetic brushes coming from refer which is great to have the different options the different price points for depending on what you're looking for the brow pencil from benefit i've already told you guys it's my new holy grail it's the best eyebrow pencil i've ever used it's so long wearing it's so easy to use it achieves really natural hair like strokes very easily and i'm living for it and then this stunning little number from clay de Poe. i wish the shade worked better for me because it's definitely a bit too light i kind of made it work with blush and everything today but it's definitely on like it's very light for my skin tone so i'm not really going to be able to use this but the packaging is absolutely unbelievable it's so beautiful one of the most beautiful makeup items i've ever seen so if you have a fairer skin tone than me then you are in luck because it will look stunning on you it is a really nice natural highlight it really does blend into the skin beautifully so i think the formula is really nice but on my skin tone it just it leaves too much of a cast it leaves too much of that sort of grayish tone to my skin because it's just sadly too light for me i do like these lipsticks i think they're really nice i wasn't running back to get more of them because they i have a lot of lipsticks like this this is my type of lipstick this is my cup of tea i like a medium opacity i like the skinny lipsticks as well but i like this shinier lipstick and this just isn't in my top few favorites it's a nice lipstick i love the color and these sort of caramelly nudes are harder to find but it's just not quite shiny and creamy enough to compete with like some of my favorite formulas the dior addicts they are way creamier and way shinier than this it just can't live up to those i prefer the sisley i prefer the ysl of course all of those are a bit shinier and creamier and i just enjoy them a bit more also the hourglass phantom glossy balms glossier because they are a glossier formula and they also have that tingly which you know really plumps out your lips and gives you that gorgeous pouty lip so yeah i don't think i would go back and get more shades but 
it also wasn't like a flop. It was just like, an, it was nice-ish. I'm not wowed by them. I think there are better formulas out there, to be honest, that I already own and enjoy more, especially the Dior Addicts. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on this full face of new makeup that I tried today. Please let me know what you are most excited about out of these products in this video. Are you trying any of it? Are you passing on all of this? Is there anything that you are super excited to try? Let me know in the comment section down below. But thank you so much for joining me today. I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.